Hello and welcome to the 140 Game Bill Guard Tactics video. Now before we get into today's video, I would like to say a huge thank you to Jonathan Davies for buying me this Medusa model. That's right, the picture on screen today is one that I've taken, but the only reason I have this Medusa is because Jonathan Davies bought it for me. Absolutely incredible. So this is now called the Jonathan Davies. And let me tell you, whenever I have used this model, and I recently used it in a tournament, every single time I went to fire it, I was like, Jonathan's here, or Jonathan's ready, and every single time my opponent was very confused, but also very scared. So massive thank you to Jonathan for buying this model. Absolutely incredible. I cannot believe I finally got my hands on all these things and I've used it in a competitive environment as soon as possible. And that is the point of today's video. We're gonna be doing a competitive unit review of the Medusa. So strapping guys is gonna be a good one. So for those of you that don't know, the Medusa is a Forge World Artillery piece. No point checking your codex, you won't find it in there. And the model that you actually get is the Armageddon Pattern Medusa, and it's pretty good. What you get for your 140 points is a vehicle which has got movement 12, weapon skill 6 plus, but it's an artillery piece, you don't really care about that. Ballistic skill 4 plus, fairly standard for guard. Strength 6, toughness 7, which is pretty good for artillery as far as the guard is concerned. A lot of the time you look at it like Bazaar, like toughness 6, so toughness 7 is a pretty tough artillery piece. And then you get 11 wounds, 3 attacks, leadership 7, and a 3 plus save. Now the main armament of this thing is the Medusa Siege Cannon. And it's got a 36 inch range, it fires heavy D6 shots, it's strength 10, it's AP3, it's D6 damage, it's got the blast keyword, and this weapon can target units not visible to the bearer. That's right guys, strength 10, AP3, D6 damage. This is basically an indirect firing Demarcia Cannon. And we all know how good Demarcia Cannons are. I mean, they're literally basically the only viable real choice for Lehman Rust tanks these days. And so being able to get one of these things that you can hide behind line of sight and fire away with it is pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. So what's the downside? Well, basically it's got a big Achilles heel, which is that heavy D6 number of shots. It only fires one D6. Lehman Rusters are so good with demolisher cannons because they fire 2D6 and you can put them on tank commanders so they can hit on a three plus. But this thing only fires 1d6 and it doesn't get to hit on a 3+. plus. I mean, you could put for destroying Firstborn Pride on this. You could maybe put this as part of a Cajun Artillery Regiment and start using overlapping fields of fire. But by and large, this thing's going to be hitting on a 4+. Plus. And d6 shots and hitting on a 4+, plus isn't great. But there are a number of ways you can mitigate this. And at the end of the day, a Demarcia Cannon is a Demarcia Cannon. And if you hit with it, and you wound with it, you tend to just smack the bitch out of whatever was on the receiving end of that big old Medusa cannon shell. So it is a very powerful weapon, but you need to take into account the fact that it only fires D6 shots and you need to have ways of mitigating that random number of shots because otherwise you're going to find the cannon very, very swingy. And we don't like swingy weapons, we like consistent damage weapons. That's why we're in the guard, son. So, what are the ways that you can make that random D6 number of shots more reliable? Well, there are essentially three main ways you can do that. The first one is, you've got a CP. You can use a command point to re-roll the random number of shots from a weapon. This thing only fires one D6, so if you roll that one and you're not another regiment, you can just use a command point and re-roll the random number of shots. It's not great, it's not an efficient way of doing it, but you can do it, and that option is available to every single regiment out there. But speaking of regiments, if you're going to be taking Medusa, then you probably want to be leaning into regiments that get the ability innately to reroll random number of shots. Now, if you're taking one of the main Codex regiments, you're going to be looking at Katachan. They get the extra strength of their infantry, but they also get to reroll one of the dice when firing a random shot weapon. Well, guess what? This thing only fires 1d6, so that's absolutely fantastic. So Katachan works really well with the Medusa. You can also take Gunnery Experts and Spotted Details as a custom regiment choice to really boost the Medusa. Now, Gunnery Experts, again, lets you reroll that random number of shots, which, again, basically mitigates the Achilles heel that this thing has. But the good thing is that Spotted Details also gives you an extra 6-inch range on the Medusa Cannon. Now, 40k boards are kind of small, and you will find with the Medusa that you're going to be deploying it kind of further back, maybe in, like, your deployment zone, like a, a table quarter right in the corner somewhere. 
And if that's the case, then you're going to find that that 36 inch range actually feels quite short on an artillery piece. But if you take spotter details, then you get an X6 inch range and you've got a 42 inch range on this thing. That's actually fine. And when I ran this thing at the latest tournament, there was only one or two instances where it wasn't in range of what I wanted to shoot at. And it was never really a big deal. I just switched target onto something else because at the end of the day, Strength 10, AP3, D6 damage, you can throw that thing into any unit on the game and it'll do damage to it. It doesn't really matter. And that's the great thing about having such a powerful gun. You can fire it at big things. You can fire it at medium things. It's going to take a chunk out of whatever you shoot at. Hell, you can fire this thing at little things. You'll get the max six shots there. It's another way of getting around the fact that it's only got D6 shots. So the Medusa does have a weakness. In fact, it has a couple of them. But you can easily get around them by using like a custom regiment trait like gunnery experts and spotter details. Now before we get to how I would use this in my list, I want to talk about those secondary and tertiary armaments that you can give this thing. Now it comes with a whole heavy bolter or heavy flamer. Now a lot of people would say you want to take that whole heavy bolter because it's got long range firepower, it complements, it's got a similar range to the Medusa cannon. Why wouldn't you take the whole heavy bolter? I don't think taking whole heavy bolters on artillery vehicles is actually a very good idea because you very rarely fire them in that intended purpose of a little bit of extra long range support. Because artillery vehicles, even ones like the Medusa, which like Tufton 7, are still relatively fragile, even with things like Armour of Contempt. You don't want them to be assault tanks. You want them to be out of line of sight, firing away, blasting the enemy and having no risk of reprisal in return. That's how you want to do it. So you're very rarely going to use that heavy bolter. If I could recommend to anyone watching this video, if you're thinking about putting a whole weapon on one of your artillery pieces, I highly recommend taking something like the heavy flamer. The one time that you're going to fire that whole weapon realistically is if someone's threatening you with a charge or you've already been locked up in combat. That heavy bolter isn't going to plink you out of combat, but that heavy flamer just might. If you've got something like a few grots on your hull, or maybe realistically more like some Gs look or a single marine has made it through the barrage and has tagged your vehicle, you're much more likely to be able to just burn him off the hull, to burn those few cultists off your hull with that heavy flamer, especially if you're taking gunnery experts and spot details because you get to reroll the random shots on that heavy flamer as well. So you can burn them off the hull and then you can still fire your main gun. So I would recommend for the secondary armament, the heavy flamer, because it gets you out of a problem that the heavy bolter never will do. And the few heavy bolter shots you miss out on, you're not really ever going to miss out on them. Now, speaking of tertiary firepower, again, I wouldn't really bother with storm bolters or heavy stubbers. You're rarely going to use those extra bullets. The one exception I would consider is maybe the storm bolter, because maybe it helps again to, you know, take some people off the hull because you get four shots when you're wrapped in combat. But realistically, I probably wouldn't spend the points. The... Medusa is not the most expensive artillery piece out there. You've got things like Manticores, but it's still not super cheap. Like the Basics, it's 140 points. So I would just keep it with that main armament and that secondary armament. Now, what is the role of the Medusa in your armament? Well, of course, it is to, to provide indirect fire. It wants to be there to support your other units. And how I see the Medusa firepower, how I see a lot of artillery firepower, is it is supporting power. Your Lehman Russes are going to be the ones that do the main damage. But there's always going to be that instance when maybe you didn't quite do as much damage as you wanted to. Maybe there's a single Terminator left over and you really can't afford that guy to be there. Maybe there's an enemy vehicle that just needs a couple more wounds chipping off. This is where your artillery comes in. It can chip off the last bits of damage here and there. It's also fantastic for targeting lone enemy units that might be trying to achieve objectives. You can do that. They're really good at picking those little lone scrap units up as well. And last but certainly not least, they're fantastic for harassing your enemy's backfield. I can't tell you the number of times that I've been able to swing a game in my favour by simply just targeting that cheap tax unit that nearly every competitive player brings that they just stick on their backfield objective. Oh, five sets of battle, five incestors. I'll just put them on my back objective out of line of sight. Nobody will think they're there. Well, you know what? I'm in the guard. I know they're there. And if my artillery has one job, it's to pick that little five-man unit up and suddenly your backfield objective isn't secure and my opponent start moving units back to secure it or he just goes and abandons it, at which point he's getting less primary. That's what artillery is for. That's what the Medusa is fantastic at doing. It's really good at picking up little scrap units, individual little tough units, taking the few wounds remaining off a tough unit or for harassing the enemy's backfield. Now, within the artillery role, the Medusa serves another sort of sub role. And I see it as the third tank, all right, the third artillery piece. 
When you're looking at taking artillery in your guard list, typically you're going to be looking at taking two units from the codex, either two manticores or you're going to be taking two basilisks. And the reason you take those two and you don't take three is because of tank cases and full payload. You can only get two tank cases in your guard army. You can swap your warlord trait out for one and you can spend a CP on another one. So nowadays a Nephilim, that's going to cost you two CP. So you can get two full payload basilisks or you can get two full payload manticores. But the problem is, is both of those units, the manticore and the basilisk, without full payload on them, a kind of lackluster. D3 damage just is not good enough in this day and age. With all of the reduced damage that flies around, all that kind of stuff, you just need the ability to make sure that when you hit and you wound and you've got to the enemy's armor, that you're splatting stuff, okay? You need that damage three or you need an average of damage three. And that's where the Medusa comes in. Me personally, I like to take a couple of full payload basilisks now. And the reason for that is because of Armour of Contempt. But I don't want to take a third basilisk because it doesn't do as well. I don't want to take a Manticore. It doesn't do as well. What I want to take is a, a weapon that has that D6 damage that I know, even if it only hits and wounds and gets one wound through every single turn, it's doing D6 damage. That's potentially 6 damage. On average, that's 3.5 damage. Okay, And again, I have that CP to reroll the damage result if I need to. So... That's what the Medusa does for me. I take my two full payload battles, they're my main artillery pieces, but I need that third one. I want that third one, especially if I'm taking something like a brigade. I want a third artillery choice. It isn't just a random mortar pit that's not going to be able to fill out much in terms of actual damage output. It's just a random tax unit for the brigade. The Medusa actually does damage. And yeah, it's a little swing in. Yeah, maybe some turns because of that D6 damage, it'll flatten something, and maybe sometimes it won't do as much, but I have found the Medusa to be a solid backup artillery piece it is a solid third artillery piece to take advantage of taking three sources of indirect fire and to fill out that brigade and to get you some excellent supporting firepower. That is the role of the Medusa. It's a solid workhorse, but it's not the premier artillery in your force. That is your full payload bad boys. Now that's it for today's video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please consider giving it a like and a subscribe and a comment and all that good stuff. And let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Do you like the Medusa? Do you not like the Medusa? What would you take instead of it? What is your experience with using this unit? I personally have had a very positive experience with it and I now would find it difficult not to include it as that third artillery piece in my list. But what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments section below. Now, if you've really enjoyed this video and you want me to see me do more unit reviews, or you've got any ideas for unit reviews, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It is thanks to my channel members and Patreon supporters that I'm able to do this gig full time now, which is just insane to me, but hell, it's absolutely fantastic. So massive thank you to all of my channel members, all of my Patreon supporters. And I just want to take a moment now to say a thank you to the latest channel members and Patreon supporters. So massive thank you to Nuki Brown, William Hale, Kevin B, Def Noise Marine, Ricky Brown, Humi Lug, Matt 2001, Silver Prepper and Furry Curry. Massive thank you to all of you guys for doing your part. I also want to say a big thank you to the latest Patreon supporters as well. So a massive thank you to Jake Pascal, Stuart Francis, Harvey Hansen, Hans Anderson, Philip French, Garth Vader and Andrew. I appreciate all of your support guys and thank you so much for signing up on the Patreon. Last but certainly not least, I want to say a personal heartfelt thank you from the bottom of my heart to all of my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the people that have gone well, well above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to supporting my channel. And their generosity is, is frankly life changing. It's incredible. These are the people that have signed up at the war master tier of Patreon, the absolute top tier of Patreon support for the Mordian Glory channel. So I want to say a personal thank you to Navy Veteran, Philip French, Alex Stengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh, Swordfish Trombone, Diesel Fox, Ross Miller, Tom Sutton, and of course, Sly Varney. Massive thank you to each and every one of you. I mean, you guys know how much your support means to me, and I just want to say thank you, and I won't let you down. But <laughs> anyway, I don't want to get too soppy on this one, boys, but you guys know how much I appreciate it. Massive thank you. Hope everyone's enjoyed today's video. And if you have, I'll see you guys next time.